For the past decade, management guru Jim Collins has studied the key reasons why some companies do well during difficult times, and what he has learned is especially relevant today. Uh, those lessons from successful companies and their CEOs appear in his new book, Great by Choice, and Jim Collins is here to share some of the most useful examples with us here this morning. Good to see you, first of all, Jim. It's great to be here. And this isn't just about companies, first of all. I mean, this is for anybody no. out there watching right now, you can apply these things essentially to life in general. Yeah, when my co-author Morton Hansen and I began this project in in 2002, we were living with the angst of uncertainty in the sense that our world was starting to spin out of control. And as individuals, we wrestled with this question. So we thought, why not answer it through the lens of companies? Yeah. Why do some really thrive? Mm -hmm. And what were some of the companies that you were able to, to highlight and pinpoint here that have done well over the years when the economy has yeah, performed as poorly as it has? You well, went through some 20,000, didn't you, to yep. get down to just seven companies? Yeah. So we started with 20,400 companies to find seven that rose to become not a little bit better, but 10 times better than their industries in worlds that were very uncertain and chaotic. So take, for example, Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. Here's an industry that is full of interest rate spikes and fuel shocks and deregulation and all kinds of events and yet it ended up beating the general stock market by 63 times. Think That's about remarkable. That. All right, well, so give us the secret. What is the key to this kind of success? Well, it comes down to the way the leaders lead and the way they build their companies and the way the people behave. Uh, we, we write in the, in the book about this analogy of these polar explorers, Amundsen and Scott going to the South Pole in 1911, 100 years ago. And the way Amundsen led his team and the way Scott led his team really is a perfect analogy to the way the leaders led their teams. And what you find in an Amundsen is that he's got fanatic discipline and empirical creativity Creativity and productive paranoia, which keeps you alive. Mm -hmm. And it all begins with the fanatic discipline. So those are the three key elements right there. For people at home that are saying, okay, well, what exactly is he talking about with each of these three mm -hmm. elements? Yeah. Let's yeah. talk about it. Fanatic discipline, yeah. meaning what? What does that yes. mean? Let's give yeah. this people a little Well, so, it, it, so you think about it. You're facing uncertainty. You, you're, you, you maybe uh, get hit with a health thing, or uh, you've lost a job, or you're trying to build your small business, or you're trying to make the sports team. And you're thinking, what do I do to get up in the morning? How do I go forward? We came across this thing called the 20 mile march. And the idea is that if you want to walk from Maine, from San Diego to Maine, you could either try to do big 50 mile days in good weather and then hold back in, uh, in bad weather. Yeah. Or you could just every day, no matter what, do 20 miles a day, 20 miles a day, 20 miles a day. I was talking with somebody yesterday who took this idea because our companies all had 20 mile marches, 20 mile march, 20 mile march, 20 mile march, mm -hmm. who was trying to make a transition from having lost a job to finding a job. And she said to me, she said, I read your fortune piece. I had a 20 mile march. I woke up every single morning and said, I am going to reach out to three contacts a day, every single day, like clockwork. Not seven on one days yep. and zero on others, but every single day, 20 mile march, 20 mile march. So you're talking slow and steady. That's really kind of the key here. But what about risk taking? Because yeah. if you don't take that risk, are you missing out on a big yeah. opportunity? Yeah, well, first of all, it's intense and steady, mm -hmm. right? Because 20 mile marching can be intense and difficult times when you don't want to get out of bed and you still do your 20 mile march. So when we look at the empirical creativity, what we found is that they would do what we call fire bullets, then fire cannonballs. What that means is you fire a bunch of bullets to figure out what's gonna work, then you get your line of sight, you put your gunpowder in a cannonball, and you fire that cannonball, and that is your big bet. So you look at something like the iPod, which we write about as how it was a series of bullets, a series of small shots, bullet, 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 and, and then boom. finally, boom, big cannonball. Crash. And finally, productive paranoia real quick. You know, the only mistakes you learn from are the ones you survive. Mm, so true. you should always have reserve buffers that you can endure shocks and go forward. All right. Good Jim, lessons there. Advice. Key points. Jim Collins, thanks so much. We do appreciate You're it. You're very welcome.